NFL Big Game Previews for week number seven. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. Right there, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on any of these games over at their six wonderful sports books. Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Hollywood, Sam's Town, First Jackpot, and Fitz Casino. You can find more information over tunicatravel.com. You can find all of our picks, all of our YouTube videos, all of our podcasts, all that wonderful stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Help us out. All right, let's jump into this thing. Game number one, the biggest game of the weekend. And I think this might have been, like, there's there's two that could be the biggest game. I think this is the biggest game. Patriots, minus four. Well, that was the opening line. It's now at minus three. The lines this week brought to you by the Fitz Casino in Tunica, Mississippi. Go down, and get your sheets, get your action in. We'll go with their line. Patriots, minus three at the Bears. And so the over-under on this one. This would be a bigger game had the Bears pulled out that win against the Dolphins. Agreed. I still think it's a big game. Oh, I, oh no. Uh, over, over under is 49 and a half. Saturday, noon, CBS, Soldier Field in Chicago. The Pats are 0-2 on the road this year. The Bears are 2-0 at home. Matt Nagy, 2-0 against the Pats as a coach at Kansas City. Patriots are giving up 110 rushing yards per game, 4.5 yards per attempt. The Bears are averaging 4.4 per carry and 130 rushing yards a game. Uh... This is going to be a knockdown drag out fight, I think. This won't be like the the wonderful thing about the Patriots, they can play any different way. That's right. Right? They they, they can play they can play a forty three forty game. Or they can play a twenty four to yeah, seventeen. Seventeen game. game. You're damn right they can. So what uh what is your feeling on this? Man, I'm a little nervous. Uh you know how Khalil Mack has just wrecked the NFL. The Patriots don't have a great offensive line. Um I, I know they want to run the football. I kind of want to make sure they do a lot of max protect. Like, there's a yeah. part of me that thinks I'd rather max protect than run the ball. <laughs> because if you run the ball and you win the game, great. But if Tom gets hit by a monster named Khalil Mack. Or Roquan and Smith. And he's out. Or, or Smith or anybody else rushing. Then then you lose the war. Them, them getting... Khalil Mack completely changed this team. Yeah, oh, totally. Completely well, changed this team. He's he's one of the best defensive players in football. That that kind of happens. Have you noticed that the the totals are going up this well, year? Yeah, they should. They I mean, should I, obviously they should. But the, scoring like, is just blowing up. This this week has felt like all of the the lines are just the, the way totals high. are way up, way high, way way up. So you you don't have any any forty point totals anywhere. Nope. Uh, Cowboys Redskins is like forty one and a half. But Either way, that's not one of our biggest games, but that is uh I don't even have it as an honorable mention. It's How crazy be. is that? Next game up. Number two, Bengals at the Chiefs. Sunday night football game, the Chiefs minus five and a half. Over under fifty eight and a half in this one. Sunday, seven twenty PM NBC. It's at Arrowhead in Kansas City. Both defenses have great passing off or both uh both Offense. teams have great passing offenses and they both have terrible passing defenses. The Chiefs are 6-0 against the spread this year. The Bengals are 4-2. and Bengals coming off of a terrible, terrible home loss to as favorites yeah. to the Steelers. Small favorites, but uh, favorites. The Chiefs did cover last week uh, against, the, uh, Correct. against the Patriots. Three and a half, four. Um, Chiefs at home feels like this is probably the right play here. Yeah, I, I can't believe this wasn't a touchdown game. I was shocked. It opened to six and a half. It's been bet down to five and a half. Yeah, that that and there's a lot of sharp money on the Bengals too. I mean, that's not just it, is it just because it's it's so high? Yeah, I think that we're they a think lot of people are thinking game? that this is going to be a field goal game. It, here's the deal: the Chiefs are either going to play one of two teams. They're going to play a team that can score, and like if the Bengals. you can score, then then it's probably going to come down to who gets the ball last, or they're going to play a team they're going to blow out if you can't score. Because they're going to score on if, everybody. If the Bengals are still worried about last week and losing at the last minute to the Steelers, then they can they can absolutely lose this game big time well, again this week. Both of these teams did the exact same thing, though. It, both of these teams had a chance at the end to have the did, ball. Didn't both like? Didn't both of them feel and they, different though? Y- no, like, I with, felt with like the, both the of the them Bengals? scored. And I felt both of them scored way too early. Well, no, no, and I there was with that. no doubt in my mind that Ben Roethlisberger, because both of them only needed a field goal to win. Yeah. And so I thought, well, 
this is easy. Roethlisberger can get him in the field goal range. He's only got to get him like 30, 40 yards. Yeah. And there was no doubt Tom was going to get him in the field goal range. When you only need a field goal to win the game. I feel like the result of the game for the Bengals felt hopeless. Because, I mean, it's been, what, the last nine games well, yeah, okay, against the Steelers? It's a little bit more destructive to the team. Okay, right. now that, all right, That's I what thought I'm you were talking about in the, all right. Like, how much does that loss affect you as a team? Do like let the it Chiefs, beat them twice? Yeah. The Chiefs are, hey, we were going up against the, the right. Kings, and we were, we were playing against the Goat, and we were playing at their place. The Bengals were at home against the Steelers. And this and is the best chance they've had to beat the Steelers team in a long time. In a time. long time. I get it. Okay, I could, all right, now I see what you're talking about. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we're going to find out. If the Bengals come out and they play like gangbusters and they still put up 30, 40 points like everybody else has against this Chiefs team, then then no, I think it was just a loss and they've moved on. If they come out flat and they look discouraged and, and like they can't move the offense and the Chiefs are making plays – and the you Chiefs come out get flat up 20, against the Chiefs, 21 points yeah, you on could fast. Be, you could first, be out of the game early. Yeah, then then you're you're right. I think you can chalk some of that up to the Steelers just breaking them. I think you're probably right. All right, game number three, Saints at the Ravens. The Ravens are a two-and-a-half-point favorite right now over at Fitz Casino. Over-under is 49-and-a-half. Sunday, 3.05 p.m. on Fox, M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. The Saints are 8-0 against the spread in October the last three years. They're 9-1 and against the spread off a of bye the last 10 years. But the Ravens are 2-0 and at home, and they look really, really good when they play at home. Um, I don't know what to make of this game. Uh, I got a great feeling about this game. This game is in my gambling picks. It's in my but gambling I'm, picks, but too. I'm, I'm trying but to I'm gonna, play it. I'm tr- but I'm going to but I'm gonna give the, the, the cat out of the bag here. The, the, Bengals, or the Ravens look great at home because they've played two garbage teams at home. Yeah. Like, I'm not giving you... A blowout win against the the Bills, the Nate Peterman led Bills. Yeah. As as we look great at home. I mean, the Saints team is a top three team in the NFL. They got this thing rolling. They're healthy. Everybody's back. Breeze looks like the MVP of the league. He's not going to be stopped. Mark Ingram had two touchdowns yeah. the last game. They can run Alvin the ball Kamara on you and control the clock. They can score fast if they want to. They got receivers galore. Yeah. That, I think the Saints are going to come in to Baltimore, and I don't know that they're going to blow them out. I don't know that they're going to have their way with them. I think they're going to win the game, and I don't know that this is going to be, you know, Justin Tucker, a last-minute field goal to win kind of thing. I think the Saints are going to have this. I, I think you're probably right. Game number four, Panthers at the Eagles. Ah, the Panthers are 3-2. and two, The Eagles are 3-3. Three and three, The Eagles are a 4.5-point favorite. Over-under is only 45 on this. I was a little surprised that that was kind of low. Uh, but with the two defenses, which this is more of a, a better perception, right? Probably. Um, because neither defense has been great this year. So and Neither offense has been great either. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Sunday at 12 p.m. on Fox, Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Carolina's defense is uh, shoddy. It... it this boils down to whether or not the Panthers can run on this Philly defensive line. Philly's defensive line's given up less than 80 yards rushing per game, but the Panthers are running for like 130 yards a game. Um, look, it, Christian McCaffrey looked really good this year. He's yeah. looked good, but it's it's one of those guys that uh, he's smaller. He plays well in space. That's it's it. just like what you were talking the, about with the, Deion Lewis. The, the game has changed, and I don't know that he has to run let him get past the defensive line and throw him the ball because I don't know that this Eagles team has the middle linebackers to, to guard him, to cover him. Yeah, you might be right on and that. And that's how I would beat him. I don't know that I'm running him between these tackles because that defensive front is strong. The The metrics say that the Eagles should be favored by more than a touchdown. So I will say that. Uh, but the Panthers last week not covering – at uh, at Washington, having a chance to win, and yeah. Cam Newton just sails the ball multiple times, way out of the way. Yeah, yeah. on that last drive, did I mean, kind of looked like throwing a game. He missed so bad. I don't. I, I like that was weird to me that he. It missed was. That it was badly. definitely strange. It was definitely strange. Uh, game number five, your brownies. The Browns at the Bucks. Bucks I think favored this is by three. Interesting game. I don't know that this is good game. Well, all right, we won't call this a big game. Yeah. It is. It's, it's interesting. definitely interesting though. Uh, the over under is forty nine and a half. It's Sunday noon on Fox, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. It, this is basically an elimination game. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah two yeah. teams that you would think 
Uh, now, obviously, Tampa, before the season, you thought it was hopeless, but then they come out and look on fire with Fitz Magic, right? Uh, the Browns, you would think, okay, they completely redid this team. Looks like this might be a playoff team. Browns are 2 3 and 1. The Bucks are 2 and 3 now. Bucks have lost three straight. The Browns look like they had it rolling for a minute, and then they just get it handed to them by the Chargers last week, which might, and it's not a bad loss, but it's at home and you got obliterated. Let, uh, let me tell you what scares me about Cleveland right now is the depth is gone. They have three, three receivers that are healthy and can actually like run routes and play. That's it. That's the that's the list. That's all yeah. they got. And and if those guys have to run every route every time down the field, it's not going to be good. Uh, Tampa Bay last week against the Falcons had over 500 yards of total offense and lost the game. Lost the game. Jameis Winston had three turnovers, I think, in that game. Well, that's uh, that's an interesting point you make because that was my point on this. I think the Browns have a really good shot to win this game. Because of turnover margin. I understand that turnovers are completely like just a, a probability, right? It's, it's turnover luck. Probability. Um, but the Browns are plus seven in turnover margin. The Bucks are minus six. One team gives it away. The other one takes it away. And I think I like the Browns here. Like, I, I think that Baker Mayfield is going to be able to score. The offense has to stay on the field. They need to run the ball to keep the defense yeah, Carlos fresh. Carlos Hyde will be big here. If the defense can can stay keep their snaps down, I think this defense can shut the Tampa Bay offense down. But they cannot be on the field eighty snaps again. I mean, they just can't get ran out, and that's what has killed them the last couple of weeks. They've got the talent to hang with anybody defensively. The offense has to sustain drives. I agree. You ready to move an honorable mention? Sure. Let's start out with the Thursday night game. The Broncos minus three at the Cardinals. Thursday night on Fox. This is the first one that hasn't been like, it, it's just kind of eh. Yeah, these are two of my bottom five teams. Yeah. So, Broncos at the Cardinals. The Hebrew Hammer. Josh Rosen. That's he, a it, pretty good nickname. I haven't his, heard that. Yet. His numbers have improved every week. He looks good. Uh, the Broncos, however, 2-7-1 and one against the spread their last 10 as a favorite. That is not good. The Cardinals... Call me when they change quarterbacks. Yeah, the Cardinals have been improving. I, it would not surprise me to see Arizona win this game outright. I'd like to see them win it outright. Just to, just to prove to the Broncos, you're playing the wrong guy. Yeah. You get beat by Arizona, you're playing the wrong guy. Now, it's whenever Chad Kelly finally makes his appearance and he looks awful, that's just going to break our hearts. Well, that's but I don't awful. know. Like, if the guy you got's awful, at what least— What difference does it make? At least you know— all right, we need to draft a quarterback because yeah. the guy we got is terrible and the guy that's on the cheap is terrible. So, Good point, good point. Uh, Monday night game, Giants at the Falcons. Falcons minus six and a half. The Giants are two and seven straight up, but six and three against the spread in their last nine as a road dog. Here's the other side of that, though. The Falcons are six and three straight up and six and three against the spread as home favorites. So this is a clash, right? Uh, can Eli score enough points against this banged up uh, Falcon secondary? I think this is how Eli and Odell get healthy. Okay, like they got a lot of New York media going on. The owner talking about, you know, Odell's got to shut up and play, and this and another. Look, you know what helps your offense? Or help? Yeah, helps your offense look good. Go play this Falcons team. You'll the, you'll, you'll put up thirty five to forty points, and and if you can stop them, you got it. You see what that total is. Golly. 54 and a half. They will blow that out of the water. So, if if you're going to make the a Falcons play. Falcons are terrible. Yeah, if you're going to make a play, bet the over 54 and a half on that one. I mean, you are depending on this Giants team scoring. That's that's true. Because um, the Falcons aren't scoring 50. No, nah, not 50, but, I mean, my gosh, last week they put up 45 against Tampa Bay. Wow. Yeah. So, you they know. You can do it, I guess. Um, yeah, the lines, again, brought to you by. Fitz Casino down in Tunica, Mississippi. Go get your bets in down there this week or at any of Tunica's fine sports books. They got six of them down there. We love them all. I promise. We've been to all of them. They're all great. Sunday, 8.30 a.m. in London. Honorable mention game, Chargers at the Titans. Well, Chargers against the Titans. I think it's technically a Chargers home game, right? Technically. Uh, <laughs> Chargers minus seven in this one. I don't know that that is enough. The 
The Titans have not scored an offensive touchdown in the last two weeks against the Bills and the Ravens. This Chargers team is getting hot, man. And the Chargers have a good defense, and Melvin Gordon's going to be all over the place. Uh, the Titans, early on, we thought they're a team that like can drag you down in the mud, all Ooh. that kind of stuff, but... Whew, well, uh, at some point in time, you need dudes. You need bodies. Yeah, and here's and, what bothers me is they've spent draft picks. They've spent valuable assets on receivers. They're, none they're of them just, are panning they're out. They're just not good. None of them are panning out. None of them can play against press coverage. I heard uh, somebody talking about uh, they need to trade for Amari Cooper and all this, and I was like, do you not watch the NFL? Because no, no. Amari Cooper can't Cooper, play against press coverage Cooper, either. Cooper can't catch the ball either. Like, it, it just ridiculous. Anyway, all right, so off of that one, uh, the last game that I had in honorable mentions, that it's a division game, it's whatever. Like, it, no, it's not the Cowboys, but maybe I should have done that one instead. Texans at the Jags. Uh, Texans on a three-game winning streak. The Jags on a two-game losing streak. The Jags are favored by four and a half. Blake Bortles. <laughs> God almighty. Just Davion and, and Clowney Leonard Fournette is, is not there. going to just murder him. I, I think you're probably right, but the, the Texans have had three games just... Give it to him. Just I mean, hand, I, just like, give it to him. Hand-wrapped, packaged up. The Colts Christmas, handed him one. It's a Christmas miracle three just, weeks in a row. Like the clapper gave him one. I I don't know what's going on with the NFL. I don't. Uh, well, it's, it's just like there's collusion to make sure that Bill O'Brien Bill just O'Brien does just not his get job. fired. Just bonkers. it is better for us all if he keeps a job. We've given you everything you need to know about how to be a winner in the NFL. Go down to Tunica, make your bets over at any of their six sports books. You can get more information over tunicatravel.com. You can get our picks along with our previews and everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. That will wrap up our Week 7 NFL Big Game Previews.